All right, so in this video, I'm going to go in depth into knee mobility. More specifically, we're gonna be breaking down movement in the transverse plane or rotation at the knee joint. And so this is gonna require that we kind of break down movements and positions for you to understand what muscles are contracting in order for you to create this rotation. And the reason is, the better you understand what you should be feeling, the more you're gonna be able to transition that sensation or that intention of motion into different positions. So I like to start seated because number one, you can relax, you can chill. Two, you're not worried about standing and your posture isn't something that you have to really account for. And three, you can see your shin bone pretty well. And so this 90 degree angle of knee flexion is a very, very good angle to work with. Another option is seated on a chair, which kind of gives you that same 90 degree angle. But this is where you can opt optimally create rotation and practice it. So we're going to break down something called the axial rotation of the knee. So axial rotation is just rotation through the long axis of this tibia. And you can start by keeping your hands behind your thigh and trying to practice, well, number one, stabilizing your hip. Two, not letting your uh, shin muscles really, really engage. Uh, your goal here is to create this axial rotation through the muscles here in the thigh, not below the knee because the muscles below the knee don't actually create rotation at the knee. They just help create tension, so it's very easy to be fooled. When people create like knee tension or rotation, they feel like their ankle burning, which you shouldn't. You should be able to create, so if I keep my rela ankle relaxed, you should be able to create rotation without feeling any tension below the knee because the muscles responsible for creating this rotation are above the knee. So axial rotations. Stabilizing the thigh here, just to kind of keep it where it is. Also, your hands serve to feel the muscles contracting under the thigh, which is gonna be useful in a moment. You'll see why. So from here, you can start by dorsiflexing a little bit if it helps you create that pivot, um, but just don't super tense or tense up too much here at this ankle joint or this, uh, these ankle muscles here in front of the shin. So all you're gonna do is look at your shin and try and move your foot towards the outside as you create knee external rotation. And as you move your foot, you should see that tibia come along for the ride. You guys see that, right? Very common mistake is people try and bring the foot out, but then they only pronate the foot, just like that. And if you notice, it looks like my foot's coming out to the side, but my knee isn't moving at all. So we're trying to isolate this from this. So you should be able to see the difference here. Now for knee internal rotation, you gotta remember that there isn't much space to move into for knee internal rotation. At least not that many people have that. So the easiest way to uh, visualize knee internal rotation is to start at end range external rotation. So you can rotate all the way out. And once you're all the way out, then you can appreciate the excursion coming from this end range external rotation back into internal rotation, which may look like neutral to you because that might be your end range IR, which is fine. But in order to appreciate that motion or that, uh, that, uh, that joint uh, movement, you have to really get to end range external rotation to see it because sometimes people might not have any to work with. So don't get me wrong, you still have it there, you should still be able to contract into that direction. But in order for you to see it and visualize it and appreciate it and understand that this knee is capable of doing that, then you should try and start an external rotation just to kind of see that. Now, let's talk about the muscles engaging that should or are responsible for creating this rotation. For knee external rotation, we're gonna look for contraction in this muscle here on the outside of the thigh. It's called your biceps somoris. Let's not get fancy, it's just your lateral hamstring. And this hamstring attaches here to this part of the bone, your fibula or this fibular head. And because these two bones, your fibula and your tibia, are like basically glued together, not really, but very, very closely attached, when you pull on the fibular head, it pulls the tibia along for the ride. So you can see when I create knee external rotation, look what happens. You see that contraction, right? That's why if you're feeling this stuff really, really engage when you're trying to create knee external rotation, it's probably because you're trying to compensate with your ankle muscles and not really using this part of your thigh. So very easy way to practice. Take your hand, put it here on the outside, and all you're gonna do is try and look at your shin, create that external rotation, and try and isolate, make that connection with that rotation and this contraction. 
And the more you do that, the better you're gonna be able to isolate this while you relax this. So now, because I know that, I can create this rotation with my ankle completely flopped, right? Completely relaxed. So that's how you dissociate knee external rotation from ankle pronation, okay? Next, let's talk about knee internal rotation. This one's a little tougher, so bear with me here, okay? You have a lot more muscles that cross through the hip or, or kind of towards the inside and attach right here in the middle. So you have one that comes across this way, you have another that comes straight down and another that comes straight down. Anyway, all you really need to know, oh, and that, that doesn't include, or you sh I should have mentioned, you also have your medial hamstrings that also come in and attach kind of within this medial side of the knee joint. So there's way more muscles that create this knee internal rotation. But that means that because there's not that much more motion or not much space to kind of move into, it's gonna be very hard to isolate different ones. So it doesn't really matter what muscles are firing except one, at least in my opinion, because this is the one that I've been able to help people, um, help people with in terms of teaching them and understanding uh, awareness in their knee joint. And then everything else just helps assist that. But this is kind of like the keystone, I think, in, ter in terms of knee internal rotation. And that's your popliteus muscle. So your popliteus is an internal rotator of the knee joint that's like in the knee joint, okay? Or in the backside, or it was very, very deep in, in this uh, part of your leg. And the way you isolate it is you want to do a very subtle knee internal rotation. Because the second you try to create a lot of tension, you bring in a bunch of big muscles. We don't want to get there yet. That's going to come later after we learn or have this foundation of being able to isolate the popliteus. If you don't know how to feel it, I'm going to show you right now. You take your hand or a thumb, find this shin bone, and move in until you find that ledge and you fall off of that ledge or fall over that ledge. And you are you should be able to kind of like put your thumb between your calf muscle and your shin bone. And you're gonna try and creep that thumb as high up as you can before you see that enlargement of that tibia. So this is gonna be my tibial condyle, right? I'm gonna go just below that. I don't wanna go like on it right there. I wanna go on, still on the tibia because that's where the popliteus attaches. It kind of comes from, it kind of comes like this. It goes this way and then attaches right there. So if you put your thumb there, and then you subtly try and create knee internal rotation, just like this, you can see it's a very small motion. I feel something pop into my hand, and I don't feel anything up above my knee in terms of my thigh. I don't feel my sartorius contracting. I don't feel my hamstrings contracting. I don't feel my gracilis contracting, or anything that creates internal rotation above the knee. I just feel that one muscle inside my knee joint. And I know, since I don't feel anything above, that it's the only one contracting. This is the knee muscle that you want to have awareness over and develop and have a good foundation in terms of being able to contract. Because then when you load that first, you contract it. Now you're holding an ISO. Then you add in all the big muscles and just that helps to uh, promote irradiation through that tissue, through that knee joint in that end range internal rotation. Uh, that, knee, that knee muscle is also a very important stabilizer. So that's why if you learn how to fire it first, you can learn how to train it better. Okay, so we talked about knee external rotation. We talked about knee internal rotation. We talked about the muscle responsible for creating knee external rotation. Then we talked about the one important muscle creating knee internal rotation, how to palpate or feel for it, and then how to bring in other muscles into it. And then I mentioned earlier, actually maybe I didn't mention this, but I'll mention it now. Now that you understand how to create this external internal rotation, then you can start to challenge yourself. Can I create it in different angles of knee extension, right? So if I start to practice that, okay, I'm good here. I'm good here. When I get into further and further angles of knee extension, it's gonna be more and more difficult to isolate and create this motion. And that's normal. That has to do with the bony anatomy. So don't worry about, I'm like, oh my God, I'm in full knee extension. I can't create internal rotation. Well, that's because you can't. So that's another thing I wanna mention. When you get into full knee extension, the anatomy of the knee joint just puts it into knee external rotation. So don't think you're gonna create any motion here at all. So when you're doing these, don't go too close to full or end range extension. So we just kind of stop short. And then from there, you should have some access to rotation there. Now you can also do this in smaller angles of knee flexion. So I'll kind of come here like this so you can see. So I'm, in, I'm really close to end range knee flexion, but I should still be able to create rotation through my knee joint, just like that. 
So this is a very good way of practicing how to train this transverse range of motion or planar movement at the knee joint, but influencing what's happening in terms of the sagittal plane. So changing the angle of flexion extension, but still being able to control transverse forces or create transverse forces. And the better you're able to create force in these ranges of motion, the better you're gonna be able to train it. The better you're gonna be able to train it, the better you're gonna be able to resist external loads that are trying to push your knee out of position. Very, very important um, concept to understand. This is the reason we train knee external rotation. Everybody's infatuated with just training knee extension, knee flexion, you know, getting the hamstring strong, getting the quad strong, but nobody ever thinks about the knee, the stuff that is responsible for resisting the forces that tend to get us injured. So this is how you get started. Okay, so we talked about changing the angle of flexion extension. Now we're gonna go into knee controlled articular rotations. So from here, I like to do these uh, seated in the same position, hands under the thigh, and I'm supporting my leg. I'm not trying to hold it with my hip flexor, I'm supporting it. If you need to, you bring your foot out a little more so you're more comfortable, okay? And all you're gonna do is now that we know how to actually rotate, we're gonna go into knee external rotation. And remember, the muscle you're supposed to fire is on the outside of that thigh, so you should feel something under your outside hand. Then you're going to slowly, as you externally rotate the knee, extend it. When you get to end range, whatever that is, it's not end range extension, more like end range in terms of what you can maintain external rotation with, then you're going to rotate the foot in, rotate that tibia in, and as you go back into that start position in flexion, you continue to rotate. Remember, this is a controlled articular rotation. The more you rotate, the more you're gonna be able to facilitate that motion in that plane of movement. So once we get to end range flexion, back to external rotation, extend, back to internal rotation, flex, and then to reverse it, now you maintain internal rotation of the knee and you go into extension. Then you go into external rotation of the knee, back into flexion. And you can notice how I'm able to isolate this. This is not easy, okay? So this should feel like work. But if you wanna keep it more low key, just come to axial rotations, that's fine too. And I wanna leave you off with one last training strategy. You can train the actual transition through rotation, going back and forth into flexion extension, or you can maintain an isometric rotational movement as you uh, go into sat or, yeah, sagittal flexion extension, but you isometrically contract and hold this rotation. So what you do is you, let's start with external rotation. You create that external rotation, same thing, find that stuff on the outside of the thigh. And then from here, you're going to start to extend the knee. When you get to the top, you don't rotate in, you keep it out and you flex again. But as you flex again, you try and pull a little harder. And then when you get down to the bottom, you go back up and you keep trying to externally rotate that knee a little more. And then you come back down. And I think you can appreciate the angle of my patella tendon here. And you can see how much knee external rotation I'm able to create after every rep. A little bit, or every rep, I'm able to squeeze out a little bit more because I'm really focusing, facilitating that rotation as I go through this flexion extension. Oof. And I'll even get my ankle into it. That's just because I'm trying to drive tension from whatever I can to really force that rotation, which is okay if you're trying to work super high intensity, which is kind of what I cued you to do, so that's fine. Um, as long as you know how to control the rotation from the right things, when you know how to do that, then you can bring other things into it. So that's called a hinge. We're maxing out external rotation and then we're hinging through flexion extension. Now we're gonna max out internal rotation and then we're going to hinge through flexion extension, same thing. So we practice rotating in and extending, then rotating in even harder as we flex and extend and flex. And that's how you isolate internal rotation, external rotation, and then hinge through flexion extension. So just to quickly recap, we talked about axial rotations. We talked about what muscles you should feel. Then we talked about how to train knee cars, how to go through end range extension, or sorry, external rotation, go into flexion, sorry, end range external rotation, go into extension, internally rotate flex, right? So we went through that whole circle. Um, and then we talked about, we're finished up talking about hinges. So we can isolate internal rotation as we go and floss back and forth, and then external rotation as we floss back and forth there. 
And that's a breakdown of how to train the transverse plane or rotation at the knee joint and how to improve your rotational capacity and force reduction or contractile ability in those ranges of motion. So practice, it's not easy. Um, last tip I wanna leave you with is really get good at dissociating the ankle from the knee joint. That's probably the biggest thing, okay? So just practice moving only the ankle joint, then moving only the knee joint. In, in a later video or in the future, I'll show you how to do or apply the same concepts we just worked on here for the knee, except for the ankle, because these two are, they're linked. So it, when we go through ankle controlled articular rotations or isolate movement at the ankle, it's very easy to compensate at the knee joint. That's why compromised ankle position or foot position really impacts forces being tolerated or, or imposed on the knee joint. But that's for a later video. So hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more videos or more uh, explanations of other things. Um, and I will see you next time. Peace.